James P. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. <clears throat> Hello there. Greetings. And welcome to this week's uncensored, hard-hitting truth. A uh, progressive, hard-hitting, progressive internet talk radio show. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? <laughs> Very humid, uh, extremely humid. Yeah. It, it is almost the tail end of the month of July, 2015. Uh, the hazy, lazy, crazy days of summer. And uh, every time it gets hot, I find these uh, very strange uh, black insects in the house. And I took a video of it, and I um, sent it to my friend Pete in Oregon, the, the president of uh, Cyber Bugs in Space. No, Bugs in Cyberspace. He's a, he's an expert bugiologist. Mm -hmm. if, that, if that's a if that's such a profession, if it is, and I just made it up. Well, my grandfather, used, my and I'm sorry, my late uh, uncle Frank used to use the word buggyologist. It doesn't really exist, but I, you know what? I'm going to coin it. An expert at anything that crawls from now on shall be known as a buggyologist, in honor of my late uncle Frank, mm -hmm. the um, the um, ballroom dance teacher that worked for Fred Kelly, uh, who was the brother of Gene Kelly. But anyway, mm -hmm. I digress. Anyway, I sent the, a short video of, of this slow-moving, odd-looking insect mm -hmm. that I see every summer. He sent me the information back, and it, what it is is a, um, a dark-veined uh, weevil. It is related to the bow weevil. It is a type of weevil which there goes it, the cotton crop. Which is yeah, there, there goes all my t-shirts. <laughs> oh, no, on. it's a, a weevil. I believe is a type of beetle. It is related beetle. to the beetle family, not the beetles, not the group. You know the the, the crusty insects. So bless their crusty little hearts. Um. I just want to mention the common uh, weevil, uh, um, black vein, something like that, black stripe. I don't know. It's it, it's a weevil. It's 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 a uh, it's like uh, it's like between black and charcoal gray with a pointy snout. But anyway. I know I digress. We're coming to you Quite a li bit. live and <laughs> and pre-recorded and recorded from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeast New Jersey. And uh, I'm trying, I don't, well, 
I don't have any big major inductees into the Chiseler's Hall of Shame, but if something comes to mind that is not big, I'll throw them in there and I'll give them a quick inductee, induction ceremony. Uh, it's a cons it's we're also consumer advocates, so that's what's connected to Chiseler's Hall of Shame. And believe me, there's a lot of um, negative things happening to the consumer in the United States of America. That's for sure. That's what I guess that's what made Mr. Ralph Nader famous. The, yeah. great, the great Ralph Nader. Let me salute you, famous. Ralph Nader. But not famous enough to garner presidential vote. No, so, uh, people were bitching and moaning about Ralph Nader saying he was the spoiler during oh, yeah. the was... Al Gore, G.W. Bush election. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he ruined it for Al Gore, even though Al Gore won the popular vote, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the actual vote. Remember, <laughs> Mr. George W. Bush was put into office by the Supreme Court of the United States and not by winning Select, the select, That's he's correct. Selected president, not elected That's president. That's correct. That's correct. Hey, I heard, um, I heard uh, recently uh, the ugly old turtle face of uh, Mitch McConnell uh, what is he? The Senate? Is he a, a speaker of the House or Senate Majority? Senate Majority. Senate Majority. Speaker Boehner uh, is the speaker. Of the yeah, House. Uh, the the uh, orange-headed, the one that cries, Tropicana, turtle, Tropicana turtle, orange juice because he's turtle that, that orange. Turtle tears. Crocodile tears. It's Those, a he's a turtle. How can he get uh, No, Mitch McConnell looks like a terrapin, a turtle. Yeah. Uh, John Boehner looks like a, oh. looks like a Tropicana orange for a head because he's he sometimes he he looks orange and he, he cries he a lot. He takes that goddamn suntan. That's why. Well, well, I say he's a friggin' orange with two legs. He's a right wing orange that cries orange juice. The weeper of the house. But anyway, getting back to Mitch McConnell, he recently said that um, that uh, he told <laughs> everyone that's not Republican, of course. He says, uh, if you want uh, us, the United States Congress, to approve of uh, uh, allocating money to uh, rebuild the, our infrastructure, roads, bridges, and such, have to cut. Then we're, 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 we can't give any money to senior citizens. We don't have any money for senior citizens. Have to cut. Of course, he's got plenty of money to give to his a uh, rich crony corporate uh, buddies. And, and for a waste in the military, like that jet fighter, that was a complete waste. That could have uh, easily paid for the military alone. The military waste alone could pay for universal health care across the board. You know, that one jet cost... Oh... I don't know how many billions. Tens of billions. Tens of billions. Dollars. Tens of billions. Waste. But they don't have money for, for, of course not. for the people at all. None. Well, their people they have money for. Yeah, their people, not the people. That's not right. we the people is would be, you know, mainstream, the poor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The veterans, 
Ah, did they never have money who for did them. their dirty work over in the Middle East for profit? War for profit, not for protecting our freedom, which a lot of bobbleheads in the United States still insist that every single war uh, U.S. military personnel is involved in is to defend us and protect our freedom. I don't know how that uh, is true since the last time our borders and our freedom was threatened was World War II. Starting with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Yeah. So I don't know how they figure into it. They're just they're 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 people without facts, people uh, without research, and they just blurt out things like what I guess whatever they hear on the mainstream uh, 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 media. Talking like, points. Talking. They get them every morning. Fox News. They get yeah. As that gentleman said in San Francisco, when Fox News, the sanctuary city, about that, uh, that uh, guy that was deported five times and comes back and shoots the girls, finally, uh, Fox News tried to interview him, and he told him point blank, Fox News is not real news. Good for him. Okay? And that's the truth. Absolutely. It's it's almost like a, a satire, political satire. It's a joke. Actually, Republicans uh, do not know much about satire. Well, they can't they, they can't distinguish it from re real. Well, I'm very, I'm very happy that the uh, the Dalai Lama likes Pope Francis very much, endorses and supports Pope Francis, and it seems like Pope, Pope Francis, which will include the Dalai Lama, seems to like the uh, the left wing style of government, which means uh, Bernie Sanders. I think they like old Bernie Sanders. Salute to Bernie Sanders for 2016. I hear that Bernie Sanders had to uh, had to acquire a much larger venue in, in Phoenix, Arizona because uh, it wasn't big enough the original venue to hold the amount of people showing up in our in right wing Arizona. Mm -hmm. Now, if you got that kind of crowd in a right wing conservative teabagger state like Arizona, mm -hmm. you know that Bernie's momentum is bigger than we think. So it's only well, it the beginning. Be because huh? he's the only one talking about the things that interest the middle class and the poor. And our veterans, I'm sure our veterans will get behind. And the vets. Just yeah. now the veterans are realizing that they've been lied to uh, uh, because of how they're treated. Anyway, don't mind the the unwanted sounds you might hear in the background. There's some construction going on nearby. Now, I want to get it over real quick. Formalities. I want to send greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. Also, all of my uh, face a book. Group administrators, uh, Sasha Boyle, Jolton, and Jumpin', Joe Stebbins, <laughs> uh, 
Jean-Luc Odon, uh, Jay Cruz, and uh, Anthony Laura, and uh, I still haven't memorized, I, I, I always promise to try to memorize the new Administrator to the uh, Everything is Food Group, and because she had such a long name, and I, I decided let me let me memorize her first name. I should have yeah. wrote it down. It starts yeah. with an E. It's either Eliza or Alyssa. I think it's Eliza, or I know it's not Elvira. 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 Oakridge boys, Elvira, my heart's on fire. <laughs> anyway, greetings to all. Uh, and to oh, all a good night. No, no, not good night yet. Good night. What, what did Archie Bunker say? Good night, noise. Good night, noise. Good night, noise. Anyway, uh, greetings to all my um, <laughs> illustrious. Uh, uh, Facebook administrators, and I, I, I believe I, I did not forget anyone, um, except Elvira, <laughs> but anyway, and also, really quick shout out to Ken Thiessen, uh, my friend Ken Thiessen, Boca Raton, Florida, former WWE star and personal trainer, uh, and also to Mario Petrus, uh, diet expert and personal trainer, uh, to the stars of the Northeast of Petrus Fitness. All right, that, that's it. Now to dedicate the show. Oh, by the way, everything political, including the right-wing bashing, is all part of our new series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Capitalism in a Conch Shell. You will see the conch get, get waved around every now and then. All right, now, for my dedication... I got this memorized. I don't need to read this. I dedicate I dedicate this week's show to the United States Postal Service all of our postal workers in the United States. There's the the truck, <clears throat> the new metallic high quality model truck, <clears throat> because as you can see, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is a collector of high quality, they're not even models, they're replicas? Die cast. Die cast, thank you. Die cast replicas. Okay. They are not toys. They are not toys. They are collectible. They're not Tonka toys. Oh, I like Tonka. Now, yeah, but they were crap compared to this. Come on, they were huge. They were crap. Huge. They were sh I don't care how popular they were. They were uh, cheap shit. Big, dumb truck. This is the real deal, man. The die-cast replicas. Well, the Tonkas were toys. Say it like it is, man. Tell it like it is. It is. Stop. I just said there's a difference. These are not God toys. Damn it. Tonkas were toys. Not collectibles. You played in the dirt with them. We didn't know any better back then. Any better for what? They were not collectibles. If I knew that we had these things, I, I would have asked my. I would have asked my parents to get me die cast. 
We're talking Tonkas, not the die Because I don't, James P. Madonna don't, don't settle for second class shit. Anyway, getting back. Oh. I want to dedicate the show to United States Postal Workers because the Post Office, the United States Postal Service has recently endorsed Bernie Sanders for president in 2016, Yay. including all unions, Yay. all unionized people will most likely, 99.9999% endorse Bernie Sanders. Now they got to vote for him. For president in 2016. Oh yeah, the most important thing for people to do is vote. Even if you're a, 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 an imbecilic, uh, uh, a pea brain tea backer, everybody should vote. Your duty as an American citizen. But anyway, post office for Bernie Sanders, union workers for Bernie Sanders, organized labor, Bernie Sanders all the way. Post office. And I just want to say something about the post office. Now I want to say something nice. Actually, I could throw in uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame too. Dr. Bill, about 98 or 99% of all my packages from, from my online purchases, every time I buy something online, most of them is all delivered by the United States Postal Service. And not once did anything arrive damaged? Mm. Not once. Not even the box was bashed in. Everything arrived in a timely fashion, in excellent condition. Mm -hmm. Nothing ever got lost. Mm -hmm. I do not. I did not have that. Uh, happen when uh, a UPS or FedEx, especially UPS, delivered my packages yeah, because I used to crush boxes. Once in a while. Oh, 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 let me tell you about that. And it's Chisler's Hall of Shame. Inductee UPS. I think the headquarters is in Atlanta, Georgia. United uh, Par Parcel Service, something like. Anyway, I used to work for these low-life, no-good, scumbag, low, dirty, low-down scoundrels. Now, what do you really feel about them? <laughs> Many years ago, and they were the most abusive pieces of shit to work for of any job I ever had anywhere. They were so abusive mm. that I I used to go home so stressed out, just wishing that I had the ability to direct meteors and asteroids to all UPS uh, uh, executives, upper management supervisors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or should I say stupid advisors. Um, then I found out they hire many supervisors from people from people of um, a lo low walks of life that take that are willing to take the job and put up with it, like you know, like ex cons and. But, but anyway, in general. Forget about that. In general, they're scum. They're abusive. They yell at people. They insult them to get them to work faster and faster and faster. And guess what? I personally witnessed. I was in a different department. I was. I wouldn't put up with that shit. 
I was in uh, revenue recovery. I was not a loader or unloader. But I used to speak to the uh, loaders and unloaders, and I, I do feel their pain because I witnessed it. Now, packages would be crushed, would be mishandled because they were so obsessed with speed. Yeah. Speed over over Ace the waste. over the safety of the package itself. Mm -hmm. Speed is all they cared about. I'd see packages end up on the floor and crush, and and the, and the management just says, ah, "Don't worry about that. Just empty this truck out. Empty this truck out right away. Fast, 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 fast. You're not fast enough. What the hell's the matter with you?" Blah, blah, blah. Yelling at the top of their lungs. Packages would be smashed and busted up. They didn't care. But from the United States Postal Service, every package is in, is in impeccable shape and delivered in a timely fashion at the same time. Excellent, excellent service. I'm very happy with them. And this is proof, Dr. Bill, that government big government can work and they can do the job properly and get it done. Uh, it is possible. The post office is privatized. Really? Yeah. The whole, most po of it. the whole post office? Most of it, yes. Even the people that run it? Uh, really? Yeah, obviously. So, you just enjoyed me going on with my speech, I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, I still... Listen, listen. I... Listen. They support Bernie Sanders, so I can't really say anything bad about them. Well, that's the But union. I am very happy. I am very happy with... That's the union. With them. Not the, union. the manager. They, but they are unionized. So Somewhat, as far as I know, they do have a union. Okay. I don't know if they get any, you know, anything really done or whatever. If they have any power these days, unions. Well, unions can regain the power they once had. All it takes is somebody with a tough, militant attitude to get enough bodies together, the asses of the masses, it takes not pacifists, huh? Regulation. Yes, number one. Okay. Regulation. It doesn't take fighting and killing and battling and everything. It takes regulation. And regulation what is, is uh, what FDR did and and it is like a, a hallmark of importance for progressive liberals. Be I'm not even going to say Democrat. But it all be, became unraveled with Mr. Ronald Reagan, the saint. The piece of shit. Saint Ronald Reagan. The piece of shit that okay. uh, that uh, uh, made sure that the rich did not pay taxes or their sh fair share and put the burden on the middle class and the poor and he was anti-union and uh, anti-organized labor and yes, he, uh, raised, he raised the social security taxes now gee whiz does that affect the rich or does that affect the middle and poor? The, the rich don't need social security. They don't They're rich. pay it. No, it affects the poor. Uh, thank you. And the middle class. The rich don't even need uh, don't need Medicare. They don't need uh, they they don't have to worry about anything. The rich mm -hmm. can pay for their 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 retirement is automatic because they're rich. Well, Mr. H. W. They're, Bush they is can now afford the best health insurance in huh? the hospital, 
And guess who's paying for his health insurance? Uncle, uh, the, 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 the taxpayer's dole. That's correct. The taxpayer's dole. Why does a person That's who's correct. who's wealthy need to have the taxpayers pay for his medical care? Because they are better than we. They are elites. So they're not moochers. Oh, no. Not according to them. No, 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 no. They're not moochers. No, no. They're only, not lazy oh, either. Only the poor and middle class are moochers. Those people who uh, get their money from capital gains, they're not lazy. They're not lazy. Oh, you know what? They don't do any work, but they're not lazy. The people that are wealthy, actually, what happens is they don't work, I know, they don't work hard for what they have, like they, they cry. Right. When they have to pay taxes, they always they always say, my hard-earned money has to go to those poor people and the blah, 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 food lazy stamps. Moochers, yes. Lazy moochers. When you're rich, your money makes money for you automatically. And, you know, it's uh, 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 since 1776, you had told me many times that only 10% of the population was uh, up, upwardly mobile. That, I mean, that, that ever, that only 10% was... Ever made it up, yes. Ever... We are not an upwardly mobile society. No, the, 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 the whole pull yourself up by the bootstraps is just bullshit. That's correct. There is no trickle-down economics. Never was. But they, they didn't allow it to really work. There's only siphon up to the fat cats, to the top 20% economic. Siphon up. No trickle-down. Um... Yeah, no, they, they, they could have trickled it down, but the, that was a lie. It, it's life and Why that. would you want it to trickle down? Well, when it trickles down and you keep the jobs in the United States, then you have prosperity. If it, if it trickles down, that means it, it's siphoned up first. That means they got more than you. Well, the whole idea, so why would you want to the whole down? terminology of trickle-down economics, if, you, if you're really sincere about it, is... Why would you be sincere about it? Because it's called trickle... Why do you always bust my goddamn balls because every week? Because it's not a economic fair way. Whoa, look up, look up, go to Webster's Dictionary. What does trickle-down mean? Gravity allows the water to trickle down. So if the, if the profits well, of the, the company... Where come from? It comes from the top. Top. Right, and it trickles down. Top 20%. And if so you, who got it first? And if you run a goddamn corporation, the profits trickle down. Who got it first? The people that the the people the that run the corporations. Thank you. But then, it, but then, if you allow it to trickle it down, it trickles down. How is that fair? Because I'm not talking about. You're talking about siphon up. No, I'm not talking about the the, the siphoning up. I'm talking about the term trickle down was meant to be. You know what? Trickle down was. A when I go home, I'm gonna look in the dictionary for what does trickle. Trickle is is when water. It doesn't pour out. It doesn't drip out. It kind of like streams out. Trickle, right? Yeah. From my dickle. But well, where is the most water? What is the? Of course, it's up on the Thank top. Thank you. But there are a lot. But if if they really mean what they say by Thank trickle you. down, it trickles down. Why does it have to trickle down? What do you want it to do? Pour it down like a waterfall? Why doesn't it even it out? Because the the employees are not even with the CEO. We're not talking about a CEO. 
We're easy. talking about a mess. He's playing with he words, just the bus old fucking James P. Madonna, the king of the internet. He's busting my balls. Every week he does this. Because you don't understand what you're saying. He's playing with words. You have bought into that garbage. I'm going to go to the dictionary and I'm going to copy and paste what down means and what trickle means. And I'm going to plaster it all over the Facebook groups. Down means that 90% of it went up and 10% trickles down. Are you sure you're in How is that man? fair? I'm supposed to get along with it. How clear. is that fair? How could it be even? How could it be a lake or a pond? If the well, employees work for the CEO and they're on, the, they're, they're 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 down the ladder. Yeah. Well, how could it be? Well, what does that have to do with a method of economics? You're talking about a business. Well, the job. The business. The CEO ain't going to pay uh, his worker the same amount he pays himself. That's a business. Well, I'm he, talking about a method of economics. Well, he's grossly overpaid. We're not talking about him. We're economics. We're talking about a method of economics. First, you have to keep the jobs in the United States. That, we're not talking about that. We're talking about a method of you economics. Know, sometimes I It's think called trickle-down. You playing, say it's fair, I say it's not. Period. Well, I, I don't like you, you say affirmative action is fair, and I say it's that's not. That's correct. So, you know, it I mean, fair. that's it. Period. I don't know what he means by trickle down, because I only know one definition. When I went to school, down means down, and trickle is like like, like a gentle stream. You yeah, know what I mean? But 90% stayed up. Like my aquarium filter. 90% stayed up. Wasn't allowed to trickle down. Thank you! But trickle... Thank you! But... but it, How is that I'm talking about fair? the definition. If I don't care about the definition. If trickle down is allowed. I'm talking about a method of economics which you support and I do not because it is not fair. All right, then how does the CEO distribute Forget the, the prosperity CEO, of the company? The business. I'm talking about a method of economics. Let us sink our teeth into these readings. Ah, we didn't do too bad. We weren't that long-winded. I read the last paragraph of the column by editorial page editor Alfred P. Doblin, and I have to take issue with the phrase, the whole clown car of Republican presidential candidates. They're still calling it a car with all, all those Republicans? Republicans should be proud of having so many qualified candidates willing to run for president. Qualified? Oh, this guy's going to get bashed at the end of this. There are governors <coughs> who have done a superb job of running their states and putting their fiscal houses in order. Superb for who? The rich? There are that's trickle down. Trickle down by definition means you're sh it's like sharing your prosperity. Ten percent? I don't want ten percent. No, ten percent. You share, I want fifty. Thank well, you. Well, it's ten percent's a little light. Well, that's what it is. I don't care what the trickle is involved. It's light. You have a gallon of water and you, you put a big hole in the bottom and it, and it trickles. 
that gallon will empty out sooner than you think. Ah, uh, but if it empties out, who lost all the water? That ain't going to happen. That's no. your way of thinking, isn't it? No, well, that's the, what you the, have to examine. Well, the CEO is entitled. Forget the CEO. Wait, well, who's on top? The elites, the rich, the corporations. But who do you think the now, CEO is? If they're all in the bottle, all of their stuff is going to trickle down. It's going to go to somebody That's, else. Again, that ain't a good words. economic. The CEO runs, generally runs a corporation. All right, go ahead, continue. Here we continue. go. With the more CEO. playing with Why do you continuously? I'm talking about a method of economics. You're talking about a business. Not the same thing. All right, go ahead. Jesus. I was saw that so hard to get. No wonder the goddamn Republicans can't get things. Because of un because under capitalism, you know, this is what uh, uh, um, plays a factor in in, in the economics of uh, such a country it is business. Unfortunately. <laughs> But capitalism is a method of economics. Yeah. Socialism is a method of economics. Which Fascism is a method of economics. Totalitarianism is a method of politics. Etc. Yeah, well, uh, fascism and... The business, and the CEO can pay you whatever the fuck he wants. You don't have to trickle down nothing to you. There's the problem. No shit, but if you're thinking that that bottle with that little hole in it is going to empty from the top, you're out of your mind. No, because that 90% ain't it's, going it's like, nowhere like Pope, when they trickle down 10% to like you. It's like Pope, what Pope Francis says, the wine, the, the wine glass just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Thank you, Mr. Popey gets it. So it pools. So the wine is pooling at the top. And it's not trickling anywhere. Well, there may be a little trickles. Yeah, to the, to the upper... But I'm to talking to you. kissing executives. Your, I, you are supporting that method of economics. I don't. Because it's unfair. Yeah, well, the, the U.S., the American worker is not reaping the rewards that he or she deserves for their work today. Well, not for their work. They, 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 you're, you're again doing business against an economic system. I'm talking about a wrong, perverted, corrupt economic system. Yeah. Called trickle down. Okay? No. It's the same system as siphon up. It's the same. I thought it was crony capitalism that was the... That's just when you give your friend a business or whatever. That, that, that's nothing to do with it. That's when you're in power and you give things to your friends. Probably like, capitalism. Like Chris Christie giving New Jersey tax money to his rich friends. Right. That would be crony capitalism. But, but capitalism is a system. A system. Okay? Mm -hmm. It in encompasses all of that stuff. Right. But it's not business. It's not business. You don't go into a capitalist business. Business obeys capitalistic rules. Right. Just okay. like when the... And trickle uh, down is a capitalistic just like rule. When the CEO of... Uh, that 
douchebag of Papa John Pizza says I'm not obligated to share any of my company's prosperity with my employees. You know, that's an example. Well, that's a, that's that's an example of his business. He's not obligated to share because the system allows him not to do to what be, he wants. Do what he wants. Yeah. Especially if a Republican are in charge and he's unregulated. There are competent senators who have performed well in their jobs. And there are some very competent and passionate citizens who want to get this country on a better course. Perform their job. Not many. As for Donald Trump, he is in the unique position to be able to raise issues that others don't care or want to discuss. Oh, he, he, he's not shy about his voicing his opinion. Which is also a good thing. He did not actually say that all Mexicans are rapists. Just that the Mexican government allows criminals and drug dealers it does not want to go over the border. Because because the, the, the politicians in the third world countries of the planet Earth worldwide are quick to grab money. They're on the take. They're easy to pay off. The cops in third world countries are easy to pay off. It doesn't have to be Latin America, it could be anywhere. It could be in Southeast Asia. Now let's talk about the democratic field of candidates. You have Hillary Clinton, who thinks she should be president because she's a woman. And there, there goes all the feminists that only care about Hillary getting elected. She also thinks she is very entitled, as she does, doesn't answer questions about her email accounts and what she deleted. Nor does she address lingering questions about Benghazi oh, and her years as Secretary of State. What about important things like her being in bed with Monsanto? in which our country's foreign policies didn't seem to be working very well. Then you have Bernie Sanders, who wants this country to be more socialistic, like Greece. Greece, my friend, and this is an aside, Greece is the founder of democracy. How can it be socialistic? I guess he would, this person would feel the same way about Scandinavian countries where health care and um, um, education are, 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 are rights and not privileges. Yes, but I'm saying Democracy began in Athens, Greece. Okay. A lot of, of the science we have today be, be, began, um, well, that wouldn't be fair because the, uh, the uh, Mayans and the, uh, you know, some of the other cultures, Mayans and Incas, and China, you know, I mean, they all had their scientists at, at the time, but Greek, yeah, Greek, Greeks are pretty advanced people as far as Europe goes. They were the cradle of all this. Uh, to be more socialistic like Greece and other European countries. How has that worked for them? Are there any other viable candidates? I think you get the picture. 
Ooh. What is the name of this? Marcia. It's a woman. What's her full name? Irima. You're 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 a douchebag, jerk off, Marcia Arima. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, you're a white right wing douche bag piece of excrement, in my opinion. That's it. That's all I have to say. A recent letter lamented that the liberal media has labeled Donald Trump a kook and a racist. I wouldn't worry too much about others calling out Trump for what he is. He's doing a fine job defining himself as his own. He don't care. He's multi-billionaire. This same letter called him a leader. I'm not sure when the words buffoon and leader were reclassified as synonyms. But if this is what passes for the letter, we're in more trouble than I thought. Is it any wonder that Republicans seem supportive of destroying the educational system? The record, which is our local newspaper here, yeah, I hate it. In my mind, has a left-wing agenda. What? The record? But I still have found it carrying enough sufficient information to read it for the last thirty-one years. This person. However, this relationship will now stop. It's your misinformation and slanted reporting on events and facts about Donald Trump. See, now I know why Chris Christie got reelected. There's a lot of fucking stupid assholes in the state of New Jersey. got another one. Whether you like it or not, a newspaper should not misrepresent factual information. Yeah, what happened to your article, Dr. Bill, that was supposed to be in this publication? Well, it hasn't been in it. Hasn't been in it. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, is a problem. It's and it's not just the, the, the red states. It's not just the Bible Belt, it's the South, the West. Problem. The problem is also in the North. In traditional blue states, people, Americans, are severely whacked out. They are severely brain cell deficient. You have Northerners in blue states voting for Republicans and believing the lies from Fox News. There is a question I do not think Donald Trump has answered concerning his presidential candidacy. Here it is. If elected president, is he prepared for and comfortable with the fact that his assets will be placed in a blind trust and there would be restrictions on his interactions with family working in the business? Nepotism. I must say that that did not occur for Mr. Dick Cheney. What is the name of this uh, right-wing jerk-off from New Jersey? 
Eh? What's the name of this? these right wing jerk off. He's been reading the record for 31 years without any complaints. Well, any, so anybody who backs up Donald Trump. Liberal. I mean, the only thing I admire about Trump is is, is his outspokenness. I, I don't agree with what he says, I mean, he's, uh, he did say the first, first thing he would do is eliminate Obamacare. That's a pretty negative thing. But he believes in universal uh, health care. Donald Trump? That's correct. He believes in abortion. He's Donald got Trump? liberal tendencies. Oh, really? I didn't know that. And they will come out, <clears throat> believe me. When the other Republicans get on his ass, on his ass, those things will come out. If you're not if you're not right wing and conservative enough for the Republican Party, they will go against you. Yeah, to get the uh, nomination, then they, they they will try to become more mainstream. And these are That's how they do it. Yeah, these are fellow Republicans at each other's throats. Remember what Ronald Reagan said, do not talk bad about fellow Republicans. Okay? Well, in today's immoral, unethical society, I guess anything goes. <coughs> it's very, very Machiavellian, right? What is that? What is the ends justify the means? Machiavellian, yeah. Machiavellian? Um, but he, he provides good entertainment for the campaign. Uh, the next uh, letter here is about one of our local uh, House members, Rep Representative Scott Garrett. Oh, boy. Why does Representative Scott Garrett have such disdain for his constituents? First, he is a co-sponsor of a bill that would allow individuals and businesses to discriminate against gays and lesbians on religious grounds. Yeah, the House passed a bill that that would allow an employer to fire a pregnant single mother. I, from what I read. Then, Garrett reportedly told members of his own party that he, incredibly, would not support the Republican Congressional Committee because the committee endorses gay candidates. in his own party. Garrett's human rights campaign profile contains a relic of a quote. Garrett justifies his opposition to marriage equality by calling it contrary to public opinion. But by now, Seventy percent of New Jersey residents support marriage equality. That number is likely even higher in Bergen County, which is part of Garrick's district, because so many residents there live with their gay neighbors, co-workers, and friends. The fifth congressional district has grown so much since it sent Garrett to Washington. But Garrett has been left in the dust. It's time for a change. No kidding. No shit. And Garrett... But you re-elected him. Because of gerrymandering. I have two congressmen. I have Bill Pascrell, mm -hmm. the Democrat, and I have this idiot. 
Now you tell me how that's possible. You know, for the after Chris Christie got elected for the first time, his first term, people cursed him out, complained about him left and right. What did they do? They reelected him. This, is this Scott Garrett's second term? No, he's been in there longer than that. Oh man, we need term limits on everybody. We really do. You have term limits on the House. Two years. You gotta vote them out. See, this is this is the thing. People bitch and moan and complain about these um, two-party system corrupt scumbags, but then they keep on voting for them and re-electing them. Bingo. What is something? Is something seriously wrong with the brains of Americans in mo in this in this modern day? I believe so. Not just I don't know. It's just, nobody could be could lack that much common sense and be that stupid. I don't know nor understand. Excuse me. When, as presidential candidates such as Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin, or any politician, declares that he or she will bring an outsider's perspective to the White House, or states, Americans deserve a president who will fight and win for them, for them, or someone who will stay. And uh, for America. Oh, really? Fight and win for them. The them uh, Scott Walker uh, is talking about is, uh, is the elitist. Not, yeah. not you, not, yeah. not the mainstream. Yeah. And, but what is the mainstream doing in Wisconsin? They re elect him. Scott Walker. They re elect him. A blue the blue State, the blue state. After a recall. In other words, he almost lost. He, he should have lost. Why? He was recalled. Why are these Republicans getting away with, uh, 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 with um, very suspicious elections? The devil. Well, that that must mean the progressives are not are not they don't have the backbone to challenge these suspicious elections. Because if you if you sink your teeth you in like these, a pit bull terrier and you don't let go, you got all these computers now involved in the election process, and they can be hacked, and they can be manipulated. No investigation. It's shattered. It's shattered. There's nothing investigated. And all this is done by the state. There's no federal basic oversight. Well, sure, there's no federal no, oversight because you have Republicans running Washington. Now you do. House and Senate, right? Correct. Well, House and somewhat Senate. All right. You said yeah. they they don't have sixty. They don't have sixty. Sixty votes, but. These pronouncements send the shiver up my spine. In Walker's case, he and his supporters enjoy defining him as an everyman. What America is he? They lie through their teeth. And others like him referring to. They lie through their teeth. What Americans are they fighting for? What fiction are they perpetrating? Americans have lost their sense of direction, their common sense, and their ability to have an open heart, an open mind. We are not all the same. 
There are many types of families. We are not all religious. And of course, the U.S. media never challenges these liars when they say these things. Yeah. So. What one sees as a right of privilege, another sees as a violation of our rights. How can we come together when the message is always hate-filled and loaded with war terms. I want a candidate who is educated, who has a historical perspective, and who respects a vigorous and thoughtful debate about a variety of issues. I don't want a puppet of corporate America. I don't care about one's humble beginnings in life. I want a candidate of substance who values reason and thought. Well, now Barack Obama, from what I understand, has a college degree in constitutional law, right? Correct. But I haven't really seen him use it against Republicans in his defense. Has he? Um, yeah, he used it by um, extending George W. Bush's tax cuts, extending the Patriot Act, and with his uh, 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 the uh, the NSA spine, and what about the Monsanto Protection Act? And that too. And fast Why track. was that not, why was that not vetoed? What about, why did he go for fast track if he's uh, a caring Democrat? Because he's not. As Bill Clinton was. They are corporate Democrats. Yeah. I, I know uh, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders were against fast track, right? I don't know about Hillary. She, she flip-flopped on that, right? A little? I have no idea what Hillary is for. I just know that she is painting herself as a uh, a benefactor of the middle class and the poor. Hillary is to like... Elected. Hillary is like what my Uncle Phil called a chameleon. A human chameleon. Well, all politicians are chameleons. She will. <laughs> it's like if you um, if you want to polish the apple and you and you go into somebody, you walk into somebody's office and they got photos of them playing golf. All of a sudden, you become interested in golf Ooh, I love because you you, know, you you want to sh you're schmoozing. You know, you want to schmooze. You want to. Uh, you got you, something in common. It's called a sycophant thing, right? sycophant. So she is being a sycophant with uh, mainstream uh, America because she has an agenda. Yeah, the agenda is getting elected president. Right. But it, but the agenda is not that she really cares about we the people. But go back She in cares that. about Hillary. Go back and remember back in the uh, 60s uh, uh, Hillary was a Republican go back in Bernie's life and he's saying the same thing as he did 40 years ago. Hillary was a Barry Goldwater supporter. Uh, 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 rather rather cute when she was young. But she was a Republican. That is true. When she was uh, Hillary Ro Ro Rotham. 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 Yeah. Rotham. Yeah. yeah. Hilly Rodham. All right, listen. We're going to break for lunch. And, yeah, I'm uh, starving. And we're going to go to a promo now with our uh, voiceover artist, uh, William Hamilton Morrill III. And don't forget to pause and read those Bible verses oh, for yeah. uh, how to defeat a conservative oh, and learn. Yeah. They'll do that all right. Yeah, right. Heaven forbid anybody should actually read and learn anything. Uh -huh. huh. 
Yeah, we'll be back for the second half of the show. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay. We're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for doing the promo. Now, I want to induct into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Um local supermarket in our region called ShopRite. This one in particular is in Lodi, New Jersey, on Main Street in Lodi, New Jersey. And uh, it probably involves other supermarket chains also, the A&P, and you know, all of them, Stop and Shop. Uh, my problem in this case is the bakery department. You have, of course, all supermarket baked goods have too much sugar in it. They're, they're, it's loaded with sugar. Now, I've had sugar-free, not from a supermarket, but I've had sugar-free apple turnovers, and I love them. I thought that there was plenty of sweetness coming from the uh, apples and the raisins. It was yeah. cin cinnamon in there, and I thought it was it was amp it was enough. Mm. I actually enjoy it more than the sugar laden pies and cakes and whatever. But this is my problem. There's a section in this supermarket, Shoprite, where they that is reserved for the sugar free cakes and pastries for people that can't have any sugar or, or people that have to watch their carb intake, diabetics, uh, possibly people on a ketogenic diet. And this is the problem. The sugar-free cakes are smaller. The pies are smaller than the ones loaded with sugar. But they are a rip off with the prices mm -hmm. over five bucks for a little for a small 
apple, uh, um, sugar-free apple pie Ooh. for a little thing. They're 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 charging, and they use Splenda, which is a chemical that's not really good for you. Aspartame, I believe. I'm sorry, sucralose. Sucralose. Aspartame is NutraSweet. All right, uh, Splenda is sucralose. It's still not good for you at all. It's not good. It's not healthy. They're using the sucralose instead of white sugar, and it tastes terrible because, you know, the sucralose has an aftertaste. You can tell that it's and it gives you flatulence. chemical, yeah. But the point is the price, the price. A smaller cake, a smaller pie, much higher price tag because it's sugar-free. So you see what they do in American retail? They 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 create a um, they categorize something as a specialty item, and because it's a specialty item, regardless on how much it costs for them to make it, uh -huh. they jack up the price sky high. Uh -huh. So I induct American supermarkets. I mean, I can't speak for all of them. Um, like, I, I, I happen to think very highly of the southern supermarket chain called Publix. I love the store. Anytime I was in Florida, I used to go there. I used to see nothing but great things in Publix. But wiggly, far, wiggly, cracker barrel. I, n I never been to those. Publix is popular in in the um, southeast now, but as far as up here, they're a bunch of scumbags, man. I mean, come on, five dollars for a tiny sugar-free apple pie that doesn't even taste good. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have to say mm -hmm. as far as the chisels. Hall of Shame. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I do want to salute Google Shopping, eBay, Amazon, especially eBay. I'm telling you, man, you may have to wait a little while longer for your products when you buy something that's 99 cents or a few bucks with free shipping, Ooh. every time I get a package and it comes from China, I, I find nothing wrong with the product. They send you exactly what you order, exactly what you order. From China? And they email me to ask me. Did you get They it? are concerned with my package coming in ample time and 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 and, and they're and me and they're concerned about me being a satisfied customer and would you give a review i gave them a great a review? review many american american companies would say well oh you oh something happened something went wrong well you know who cares i, I don't care i don't care american companies wouldn't care about the consumer but these people care and they're and they're getting very little money from me. Mm. But I'm getting exactly what I ordered. So mainland China via eBay. I salute you with my lucky blackthorn shillelagh. Cool. Very cool. All right. Cool, man. I I think you got uh, an article about uh, concerning the recent very close up accurate photo of the uh, of Pluto the planet uh, well it used to be a planet now they downgraded it vast frozen plains exist next door to Pluto's big rugged mountains sculpted of ice Scientists said on Friday. Oh, it's cold there? 
Yeah. Wow, it's the farthest planet from the sun. After three days after humanity's first ever flyby of the dwarf planet. The New Horizons spacecraft team revealed close-up photos of these planes, which they are already unofficially calling Sputnik Planum, after the world's first man-made satellite. Have a look at the icy frozen plains of Pluto. Principal scientist Alan Stern said at a briefing at NASA headquarters. Who would have expected this kind of complexity? I guess a community of igloos would uh, do well on Pluto. Stern described the pictures coming down from three billion miles away as beautiful eye candy. Oh, a cl crystal clear, too. I saved one of those great close-ups. I'm still having to remind myself to take deep breaths. Me, too. No, they're really that stunning. Let me... Added Jeff Moore, head of the New Horizons geology team at NASA's Ames Research Center in California. I mean, the landscape is just astoundingly amazing. Spinning. Excuse me, spanning. Spanning. Hundreds of miles of the planes are in the prominent, bright, heart-shaped area of Pluto. Like the mountains unveiled on Wednesday, the planes look to be a relatively young 100 million years old, at the most. Scientists speculate internal heating, perhaps from icy volcanoes or geysers, might still be shaping these crater-free regions. This could be only a week old for all we know. Moore said. Scientists have no hard evidence of erupting geyser like plumes on Pluto yet. Another possibility could be that the terrain, like frozen mud cracks on Earth, formed as a result of contractions of the surface. Yeah, we don't know if it has a molten core, Pluto. The plains, which include clusters of smooth hills and fields of small pits, are covered with irregular shaped or polygon sections that look to be separated by troughs. Each section is roughly 12 miles across. The height of the hills is not yet known, nor their origin. It could be that the hills were pushed up from below, or our knobs surrounded by eroded terrain, according to Moore. The fields of pits resemble glacial fields on Earth. As of Friday's news conference, New Horizons was just over two million miles past Pluto and operating well. The spacecraft on Tuesday became the first visitor to the 4.5 billion year old Pluto. I guess if you move to Pluto, you will be known as a Plutonian, right? You know what I would call the, the uh, capital city? Pluto. Pluto rhymes with Pluto. And the, and the, and the, and the, uh, and the planetary flag would be the cartoon of Pluto 
Even though I hate Disney. Was, was Pluto a Disney character? I hate, I hate Disney. Well, I will, might as well. Plutonium. Pluto. Sweeping within 7,700 miles of its icy surface after a journey of nine and a half years. Wow. Nine years to get there? Almost a decade. It represented the last planetary planetary stop on NASA's grand tour of the solar system, begun 50 years ago. So, for a man to travel with our technology to Pluto, the round trip would cost him 10 years of his life, or her life. Nine? Nineteen years. Wait, 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 wait. Nineteen years. Nine oh, and yeah, nine you're and right, half. you're right, you're right. If it's a decade to get there and a decade back, that will be eighteen. Yeah, eighteen. Holy nine shit. and a half and nine and a half. Wow. Well, that's how big the universe is. It is incomprehensible. We're, we're just talking about the Milky Way galaxy. Correct. We're not talking about Andromeda, the which is larger than our galaxy. I'm a little biased. But I think the solar system saved the best for last. Stern said. On Wednesday, just one day after the historic flyby, Stern and his team unveiled zoom-in photos showing 11,000-foot mountain ranges akin to our Rockies here on Earth. Isn't it amazing how they could transmit data from so far away to get accurate, clear photos? Got all of science. The plains are the mountain's neighbors to the north. The peaks are now known internally as the Norgay Montes. Where the fuck did they come up with these names? Tenzing Norgay was the Sherpa. Oh, that's why guide for Sir Edmund Hillary. All right. All right. I, I, I apologize for what I said. I like the Sherpas. When they conquered Mount Everest yeah, in 1953. Yeah. The huge encompassing heart-shaped region already bears the last name of Clyde Tomba. Who is he? The late American astronomer who discovered Pluto in 1930. Oh, that's nice of them. Yeah. New Horizons science team promised Friday that the data will allow them to produce elevation maps of both Pluto and its big moon, Charon. Charo? Coochie coochie. Coochie? What's it called? Charon. It will take 16 months to transmit to Earth all the data collected during the close encounter. Wow. Well, it's, it's a long time coming. I'm sure the, the apparatus, the probe that is uh, taking these photos is obsolete in you in by NASA standards you know by that time you know. Hillary Clinton outlined a plan for her economic growth focused on the middle class yeah but it's like it's like 
I don't know. I just, I just get the impression it's like love taps to the rich, you know. And signal that she will be offering an extensive set of proposals to reign in Wall Street. In one of the first major policy speeches of her presidential campaign. She's funded by the fat cats, man. I believe we have to build a growth and fairness economy. Fairness. Ah, fairness. There's the word. To whom? You can't have one without the other. The Democratic front runner said at New York's New School, a university known as a liberal think tank on economics and foreign policy. We can't create enough jobs and new businesses without more growth. And we can't build strong families and support our consumer economy without more fairness. Yeah, yeah. Clinton, who got considerable financial support from investment firms when she was a senator, from New York, delivered a pointed critique of the nation's financial class, saying that too big to fail is still too big a problem. Well, another problem is outsourcing, you know, I mean... She's hitting the right buttons, you see. That's what it's all about. I mean, she's hitting the right buttons for now. Yeah. To get in. Right. Just like her husband. It's like a it's like a, a man telling a woman like if a man is insincere and he's telling a woman that he loves her just to get in her, her pantaloons, her panties. You know what I mean? It's it's it, to get in. They, they 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 do and say what they need to do. And say. She rebuked companies that had pumped profits into stock buybacks rather than more substantive investments in capital and their workforce. She presented her proposals as a middle ground between her Republican rivals and Democrats to her left. I'm talking about clear-eyed capitalism, she said. Many companies have pros prospered by improving wages and training their workers that then yield higher productivity. She's still putting her faith in, uh, in corporations and capitalism. Her speech was a big picture survey of her views on the economy, offering an introduction to policy proposals that she will detail in the coming weeks, beginning on Thursday with the rollout of her plan to encourage companies to share profits with their workers. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> Hard-working Americans deserve to benefit from the record corporate earnings they help produce. Oh, yeah, sounds great, yeah. She said, touching on her broader argument that policies that benefit the middle class will ultimately help businesses. Oh, yeah, definitely a more for helping uh, Main Street over Wall Street. I am, seriously. Clinton told the crowd, which included professors and students from the new school, that she sees a need for new, more rules on Wall Street. That's putting it lightly. And better enforcement of the existing rules. 
I will appoint and empower regulators who understand too big to fail is still too big a problem. Is that, did that sound a little like FDR? You sound like FDR, Because that's what yeah. she's trying to sound like, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, FDR okay. sounds a little like Howard Cosell, though. Too big to fail is too big. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I mean, it all sounds nice for now, but I think she's handling Wall Street and and corporate corporations with kid gloves. Of course, she's yeah. They emasculated the Dodd Frank bill, which was supposed to cut the short hairs of Wall Street. Barney Frank. He's retired, right? That's correct. He's gone. You make fun of him. I don't care. I don't care. He's he's gay. I don't care. He was a good. He was a great public servant. Uh, uh, was it, was Patrick Moynihan a Democrat? That's correct. Of New York, right? That's correct. He was another hard-working dem uh, progressive, right? I think. Uh, and now uh, I wish yeah, he would. Yeah, yeah. To an extent. Well, Barney Frank was, was a good egg. He was a good egg, right? Or, or to an extent. Hey, they all take the big bucks. Corporatism. Hey. All right. There are firms that are too big and too complex and too risky, including those in the shadow banking system. Hedge funds, high-speed traders, non-bank finance companies that need greater oversight. Clinton said she will fight back against Republicans trying to roll back Dodd-Frank and push for even more regulations aimed at reining in excessive risk on Wall Street. We have to go beyond Dodd Frank to encourage companies to favor long term investment over quick trades and immediate gains. Clinton said she will propose an overhaul of capital gains taxes, though she didn't offer in detail. In Clinton's view, companies, particularly in the financial sector, need to do a better job prioritizing their long-term interests over their short-term goals, including what is sometimes called quarterly capitalism. Wall Street, she said, needs to do more to help Main Street grow and prosper. The Democratic front-runner who received an early endorsement over the weekend from 1.6 million member American Federation of Teachers. Well, there's one union is not going for Bernie. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I mean, there's no, it's not a, a, a um, a women's organization and the teachers would make up men and women so right. I can't blame feminists for wanting to uh, be obsessed with uh, having a, a, a female president so I don't know I don't know what to say I mean evidence shows that the decline of unions may be responsible for one-third of the increase of inequality among men. So if we want to get serious about raising incomes, we have to get serious about supporting union workers. Yeah, she sure. said. And now she, now she gives a shit about, about the worker. She said she will crack down on employers who misidentify full-time workers as contractors 
to avoid paying benefits and lamented the fact that the United States ranks number 19 among 24 industrialized nations for women's participation in the labor force. That represents a lot of unused potential for our economy and for American families. It's time to recognize that quality, affordable child care is not a luxury, it's a growth strategy. Clinton also excoriated shocking misconduct in the financial industry, lamenting that few individuals were punished for their roles in participating in, in the nine, 12, excuse me, 2008 financial crisis. She's hitting all the right buttons. Hey, you could hit all the right buttons and, and not be sincere about it. That's what act, actors, method acting, you know, actors and actresses, that's what they do. Speaking of insincere, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker Oh yeah. vowed on Monday to fight for America's interests abroad and for his conservative policies in Washington. His policies? Have it help you if you're middle class or poor? Launching a 2016 Republican presidential bid by highlighting his clashes with labor? Oh, heaven forbid a, a, a worker should want a fair a living wage. As his campaign taunted his Democratic rivals and critics. The 47 year old second term governor embraced his fighter reputation as he formally declared his candidacy in an evening speech in Waukesha. Waukesha, excuse me, Wisconsin. No, I think Wisconsin is even in worse shape than New Jersey for having a Republican governor. From what I, I would say. Wisconsin is not in good shape. I think Jersey, I think over here we're in, we're in better shape than, than they are. But we're, you know, we're not in great shape, but, uh, uh, you know, compared to neighboring state Minnesota, which has a, a Democrat governor. Yeah, well, what's, and Walker has nothing to brag about over there, except his fight with the unions. Yeah, the, the where, you know when it comes to the proof being in the pudding, there the, he has nothing, no accolade. No, except the beating the recall, and 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 be, beating the unions. Russian Union. Yeah, which is That's not it. which is not a positive thing for the for the workers. For well, the, I wouldn't for the call people. crushing. I wouldn't call crushing the, the unions uh, in America's interests. Not for middle class and poor people. How on earth did this man get elected? Amazing. First, Six, yeah, get elected the first time. The first and re time. And then get elected again after the recall. Same thing with Chris Christie. Satan! Same thing with Mitch McConnell in Kentucky. But I think, I think Scott Walker is probably, not just because he has the ultimate douchebag looking face, but I think overall he's one of the Republican Party's worst scumbags. 
sleaze. Well, that's kind of hard to choose from because they're all scumbags. But he's got that smug, arrogant... What about Ted Cruz? Look on his face. Ted Cruz is comical. He reminds me, you know, with the pointy Puppet. nose and the funny eyes. He's like the, the, the penguin from Batman. Like Paul Ryan, the puppet. They both have a puppet face. Yeah, puppet. Puppet faces. Or Muppet faces, whatever. Yeah, they're... He, I, I don't take Ted Cruz seriously. I laugh at him because he's a zealot religious nut. And he's a hateful Republican. But, 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 he, but, but, but Scott Walker, he looks like he has evil intent. He you does. Know, his agenda, he looks he wicked, does. he looks like a liar, he looks smug and arrogant, he looks like a corrupt politician. There's nothing comical about Scott Walker, in my opinion. Americans deserve a president who will fight and win for them, he said. Walker left little doubt that his successful, if divisive, fights with labor unions would serve as the foundation for his campaign. Through five years in office, he enacted policies weakening organized labor's political power and became the first governor in U.S. history to defeat a recall election. Yeah, I wonder how you do that. <laughs> he becomes the 15th high-profile Republican to enter the GOP presidential contest. Well, they're going to they're gonna need more extensions to that clown bus. Oh boy, yeah. Buddy. Walker is not a clown. He is a demon. Ah! One light subject? No. Or none? Oh, I don't have a light. I have to put this on the side, Dad. What do we got? I have to pick something light. Or, or you could... Or small. Or small. It could be, it could be serious, heavy duty and small. Or it could just be light. Officials but. say all... 54 stingrays in a popular exhibit at a suburban Chicago zoo died uh. because the oxygen levels in their tank dropped too low. Well, the, 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 the curator or the, uh, the, the, the animal experts should have known better. It's either the tank is overpopulated or the filtration system or air and aeration is insufficient. The Chicago Zoological Society released a statement on Saturday saying the four southern stingrays and 50 cow nose rays Brookfield Zoo exhibit were in a shallow pool that allows visitors to touch and feed the creatures. Yeah, Most died on Friday afternoon. Just don't don't get near their tails. Um, well, uh, it's a shame. A stingray is a fascinating. Fish, it, 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 when it swims, it looks like it's flying gracefully through the water. Uh, they are in the shark family. Reminds uh, you of the B2 bomber. Yeah, the, the, stealth, the stealth. Stealth, yes. Right. yes. Uh, but they do have a very formidable weapon. Their tail is uh, serrated and very sharp. 
and very they're, long too. They're long, and I think they have. There is some kind of venom in it. <gasps> yeah, well, Hoochmo Gaw guy died from it. It's, uh, Steve Irwin. Irwin, yeah. God rest his soul. Uh, yeah, went right into his heart. <laughs> Didn't go into his leg or his shoulder or whatever. It went into his heart. And uh, that was just uh, tough luck on his part, of course. But uh, I know these stingrays of the Amazon jungle are bad, uh, not just because of venom, because the the bacteria from the river gets into your blood from the when they jab their uh, spine into you. If you happen to step on them, and their spine, because they like to bury in the sand, and their spine her tail comes up like that. Nice. Yeah. Bill Ziegler, senior vice president at the society, says zoo staffers worked hard to try to save the rays and that workers are devastated by their deaths. Well, I got news for Mr. Ziegler. Somebody did something wrong. Thank Absolutely. You, you know, uh, um, you have to... Having an aquarium is something I know a lot about. Uh, partially through trial and error, but also research. Research the, the care of any living thing before you acquire it, even a plant. These are experts. These are experts. You should have known better. You can't, if you, if you overpopulate a confined area like an aquarium, it will get dirty quick, ammonia level will, will rise. The oxygen will do. The oxygen will be depleted, disease will occur. You have what they call anaerobic bacteria that does not require oxygen, that creates all kinds of bad things. Same thing with our bodies, our uh, intestinal tract. Now, aerobic bacteria, which feeds on oxygen, oxygen makes it grow, it purifies the water. It eats up the ammonia and the waste. It's called the nitrogen balance, you know, but you have to have oxygen, first thing. You need oxygen, any living thing. Uh, this may not be short, but it has to be done because it's been sitting for a few days. Okay, before you say one word, you know how sometimes I say, no matter how old you get, you always learn something new. Well, of course. From a documentary I watched last night, did you know, Dr. Bill, that there is a freshwater seahorse that lives in Lake Titicaca in 12,000, 12, 12 or 13,000 feet above sea level in the Andes Mountains wow. in South America. I think, I think it's Lake Titicaca is Peru. A freshwater seahorse. Never knew it existed. I never knew that there were lakes on top of a mountain. I uh, thought yeah. The water, I thought the water trickled down. And it's quite from the glacier. No, no, no. This don't trickle. It's a lake, and it's quite large. I think it's uh, depths of a hundred feet too. In some areas, uh, I mean, I'm amazed. Uh, uh, hey. hey. I didn't even know until later in life that there are freshwater pink dolphins that live in, in the Amazon or the Yangtze River of China. I remember many, many, many Very pretty moons too. Moons ago. Yeah. They used to sell in the backs of comic magazines those seahorses. Yeah. 
Yeah. You used to order them. Those are the, the, most of them probably died. In transit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, seahorses are, are delicate to their environment, of course. You know, all marine creatures are, but seahorses are very picky in what they eat. They eat a certain, um, like, uh, tiny, uh, you have to give them brine shrimp, you know, things like, which they also call sea monkeys in the back of magazines. Yeah, that's what they call them. Yeah. They're brine shrimp. They don't look like the cartoon on the front of the sea monkey package. You know, the, the king and queen you know, holding the trident. And, uh -huh. No, no, they're, you know, but it's brine shrimp. Anyway, let's, what is this about? Bill Cosby. Mr. Jello <laughs> admitted in 2005 hey, hey, hey. that he got quaaludes with the intent of giving them to young women he wanted to have sex with. Did he uh, lick off a jello pudding off their private parts? And that he gave the sedative to at least one woman and other people, according to documents obtained on Monday by the Associated Press. Now, he couldn't have sex with all the gold diggers out there just because he's very rich, Bill Cosby. He couldn't get girls that way? Obviously, he has some sort of inferiority complex or something, which prevented him from having sex with a conscious woman. One that could maybe criticize him? He was either very insecure, or maybe it was a fetish of him. Maybe it was a power thing. Maybe he's a necrophilia. Of knocking out the chick. But of course, when, when, when your sex partner is not conscious, it, it takes a lot of gratification <laughs> I would say it's like having it's nothing a, more than masturbation. You might you might as well war, uh, warm up a damn blow up doll, a, a sex doll. You just warm it up. I mean, it just <laughs> that woman <clears throat> and a second woman testified in the same case that they knowingly took quaaludes from him. According to the unsealed documents, the Associated Press had gone to court to compel the release of the documents from the deposition in a sexual abuse lawsuit filed by former Temple University employee Andrea Constant. The first of a cascade of sexual abuse lawsuits against Cosby. I guess you can call it a form of rape, right? Have well, of course. If you're doing something against the other person's will, it is rape. Whether or not, whether or not you, you, you didn't get a yes from the woman, you did not get a no from the woman, but you're not her out. You gave her a Mickey and you knocked her out. So she is unaware that you are partaking in her body. So I would say that's uh, that is a form of rape. Cosby's lawyers had objected on the grounds that it would embarrass their client. Poor thing. Oh. Well, forget about the 40-some-odd women, right? Cosby settled that lawsuit under confidential terms in 2006. His lawyers in the Philadelphia case did not immediately return phone calls on Monday. Constan consented to be identified, but did not want to comment, her lawyers 
upset on Monday. You know why? Why? Because she signed a non-disclosure agreement in the settlement. Yeah. That's what happens all the time. Same thing with these companies and drug companies that do bad stuff to you and etc. They make you sign a non-disclosure agreement or you don't get paid. It's not fair. You can't lower the boom. What is fair about American business, my friend? You can't lower the boom on them, then. No kidding. That's why you got to sign it. In this case, Bill Cosby wanted to introduce the women to his fat Albert. Yeah. Maybe, maybe his fat Albert was not fat enough. It's possible, even and that though was he, where he, his he, insecurity lies. Even though, uh, you know what they say about black men? It's a stereotypical rumor going around that they're they're uh, very uh, well blessed genetically. Ah, uh, yeah. That that's why I'm saying maybe he wasn't well blessed genetically. Well, we're not a shrink. We don't know him. We don't know the full story. We don't know the full story. Why he did it? I mean, uh, I would think just the sheer fact that a man is very wealthy that alone should attract plenty of gold diggers for him to have sex with. Especially if he promises them a little, a little elevation in their career. Cosby, 77, has been accused by more than two dozen women of sexual misconduct. Oh, two dozen. Okay, not 40. Including allegations by many that he drugged and raped them in incidents dating back more than four decades. Uh, that's where the four came in. And of course his wife denies everything. Just like Bernard Madoff's wife denied. Stand by your man. Especially if money's involved. Stand by your man. Cosby has never been criminally charged, and most of the accusations are barred by statutes of limitations. Cosby, giving sworn testimony in the lawsuit accusing him of sexual assault in Constant at his home in Pennsylvania in 2005, said, he got seven Quaalude prescriptions in the 1970s. The lawyer for Constant asked if he had kept the sedatives through the 1990s after they were banned, but was frustrated by objections from Cosby's lawyer. When you got the quaaludes, was it in your mind that you were going to use these quaaludes for young women that you wanted to have sex with? <laughs> Lawyer Dolores M. Troiani asked. The Taurus Troiani? Oh, Dolores. Yes. Cosby. Did you ever give any of these young women the quaaludes without their knowledge? Cosby's lawyer objected. Leading Troiani to petition the federal judge to force Cosby to cooperate. Cosby later said he gave it constant three half pills of Benadryl. I don't 
that'll knock you out. Three half pills? Why doesn't he just give him one and a half? <laughs> That's what it amounts to. What a stupid ass. Why cut three? Uh, why cut the pills in half when you... All right, never mind. Go ahead. Although Troiani in documents voices doubt that was the drug involved. The two other women who testified on Constance's behalf said they had knowingly been given quaaludes. Knowingly? Ah. Three of the women accusing Cosby of sexually assaulting them have a defamation lawsuit pending against him in Massachusetts. They allege he defamed them when his agents said their accusations were untrue. Cosby is trying to get their case thrown out before discovery. Hmm. Cosby had fought the AP's efforts to unseal the testimony, with his lawyer arguing the deposition could reveal details of Cosby's marriage, sex life, and prescription drug use. I will call him on this show Carnal Cosby. Carnal Cosby. It would be terribly embarrassing for this material to come out. Lawyer George M. Gowan the toy argued. That is a, is a huge difference between women being uh, uh, slipped the quaalude unknowingly and, and getting knocked out compared to women that consciously well, I'm sure. spend time privately with Bill Cosby and consciously, knowingly take the quaaludes. I'm sure if the women knowingly accepted the drug. They were not thinking of quaaludes. They were thinking of something that would make them high. And not not go to pass sleep. out. Correct. And and the idiot not realizing if the chick is spending time with you in private and you're rich and famous and she's high and she's with you in private, there's a really good chance that she's going to consciously have sex with you. But he felt, like you said, he could be very insecure, and he felt he had to knock him out. He said the public should not have access to what Cosby was forced to say as he answered questions under oath from the accuser's lawyer nearly a decade ago. Frankly, it would embarrass him. Oh, they don't. We're so worried about Bill Gosley being embarrassed. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to be fair. I mean, it has to be proof. Of course, you know, the, the woman is is being what do you mean proven he just proved it well i mean the deposition he admitted it okay okay about Jeez. the quay about the quaaludes yes he gave them quaaludes right in in in, in, in uh, with the, the objective of knocking them out his object like his I said, object. she may have thought it was getting high she may have thought it was something it was getting high yeah. right. if they know if she knowingly accepted it. yes that's my point but if he was slipping a Mickey, that's entirely different. Yeah. She didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. Except when she her. No, she was sleep. unconscious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It would also prejudice him in the eyes of the jury pool in Massachusetts. U.S. District Judge Eduardo Rob Brino 
asked last month why Cosby was fighting the release of his own sworn testimony. Yeah, these these law-oriented uh, 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 readings tend to be long-winded. How much more you got? Because I'm going to run to the bathroom. Given that the accusations in the Temple Woman's lawsuit were already in the public eye, why would he be embarrassed by his own version of the facts? Cosby resigned in December from the board of trustees at Temple University, where he was the popular face of the Philadelphia School in advertisements, fundraising campaigns, and commencement speeches. And while uh, well, the mentor's back here, so we'll we will just end right there. Oh, well, hey, Mother Nature comes a calling. You gotta answer sometimes. Now, um, uh, you know, it's uh, human psychology is really it's interesting but it gives me a major headache because I just can't understand why people do the things they do and I'm not just talking about what Bill Cosby supposedly did or did um, I'm talking about everything you know like uh, uh, compulsive obsessions with certain very bizarre interests. Humans are really fucked up. Yeah. Compared to the animal kingdom, you know they really are. And um, no, you can fuck animals up too. You can make animals neurotic too. Oh yeah. Oh sure, Rob. I mean, um, psychotic. Because having that has some intelligence is high maintenance because it, it's like having a, uh, sometimes it's like having a child forever I mean for, for the life of the animal and it has requirements not only uh, proper nutrition and uh, uh, housing and water and things like that but also there's uh, the psychology of the, uh, um, uh, you know, the emotional interaction, the bond between pet and owner. I mean, listen, the top ten smartest animals did not include dogs or cats or parrots. Dogs, cats, and parrots and, and, and rabbits did not make the list. Rats did. So because you have to, you have to exercise them and take them out, interact with them. You can, uh, uh, you know, a lot of smart animals, smart animals in general, will become very stressed if they are neglected in any way. So that makes them high maintenance pets. Yes, dogs, cats especially parrots, all of them are high maintenance because you have to interact with them. Now, if you are the type that has very little leisure time, that means you won't have enough time to spend with the pet. Therefore, you shouldn't get the animal if the animal is going to sit Mommy, I want that doggy, I want that dog, I want that chicken, I want that Yeah, I want this. 
this, I want that. It, you know, impulse buying based on cuteness and based on the fact that you can't say no to your child. You know, you uh, younger American parents that coddle their kids. Uh, then the animal ends up staying alone for hours on end in the apartment, depressed, bored, ends up eating the rug. They, 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 they have to amuse themselves, so if it's a dog, and uh, they might ransack the apartment, tear things up. You know, they say if you have a dog, put on the animal planet. Keep it on all day. Or that bird channel. The channel they had birds on. It's a all channel day. for birds? Yeah, the cats watch it. <laughs> I guess the bird. Speaking of cats. I guess the bird is the, is my the word. My PC brought in a bird the other day. What? My PC brought in a bird the other day. To you? Fortunately, it was only in shock. And I finally got it out of here. It lived. For another day. Well, PC was... Um, Bringing a gift. Yeah, it was clever. It was clever enough to not... That's, how the, that's probably how stray cats survive. Well, not, uh, not unless they were taught by their mother to give the... You know, yeah. to dispatch the animal that they caught. Otherwise, it's just play. It's play. It's like a yeah. like a toy to them. Or they bring a gift for you. Yeah. Well, no. you saw. Did I ever show you the pictures of uh, uh, the uh, the very tame blue jay that Ken Thiessen yeah. family adopted? They found it yeah. as as, a, as an orphan, a little a chickadee. You know, a little baby bird. They didn't know what it was. They they fed it. They they learned how to take care of a wild bird. They they, they it bonded. They bonded with it. It bonded with them. It ended up becoming a beautiful blue jay. Now, it lives in a tree where they live, and it comes it comes in their kitchen. It'll land on their their arm, their shoulder. Bob Rice. Bob Ross used to do that with birds and squirrels. He had one crow that somebody shot or something with the wings. And he destroyed the it? wings and he could not fly anymore, so he had to keep it. But most of the time, he, you know, like if it finds a bird, a young nest, or squirrels, he'll raise them and put them back in a wild. Right, but these birds won't forget you. Well, they're yeah, that that could be a problem. And they're, you, well, you know what you know what the problem is with the blue jay. Granted, it's a beautiful bird, but guess what? He's talking to his uh, the other blue jays in the neighborhood, and he's bringing his buddies with him by Kent's house in Florida. You know, it's like <coughs> yeah. he's talking to them in Blue Jay language. You know, saying, hey, saying, I you got know, a sucker here who feeds me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this family, hey, this family, hey, this family that rescued me when I was a little chick. Yeah. They took care of me. Guess what? They got food. Follow me. And then here we go. <laughs> they fly over to Ken's backyard and. But you know what? It's a beautiful bird. It's it's uh, it's like a cardinal. They're, they're all beautiful. Well, not all, you know. I mean, well, I had this uh, squirrel. I went to my <coughs> father's funeral up in Pennsylvania, and I it was nice weather, so I had left that window right they there. They made open. the list, by the way, the top ten list. I left that window right over there open. Uh huh. And I used to buy a five-pound bag of shelled, unshelled on shelled peanuts, peanuts every peanuts. week to feed the squirrel. Oh, yeah, blue jays like them too. 
Well, that's what happened. Once I was gone, the bag was inside here. Squirrel ate its way through the screen, came in here, got the bag, chewed the bag, took out the peanuts that it wanted. So then, every day, I had to put shelled, non-shelled peanuts out there on the porch. So it wouldn't come in here in the house. So the squirrel would come up and get them and take them wherever he wants. The blue jay <laughs> used to come down and steal the damn peanuts. <laughs> yeah, I've seen blue jays dive bomb squirrels and steal their food. Blue jays like uh, unshelled peanuts. I don't know. Not on shell, shell. Shell, I'm sorry. Shell I don't know peanuts. How the hell he got the shell off? They, but, they, know. they're omnivorous. They, they will eat animal source protein, insects, and they will eat ve vegetables. Where, where a, um, a cardinal is strictly um, ve uh, a vegan. It'll, eat, you know, nuts and I don't seeds. Know how the hell he would chew the peanuts? But hey, it, it, it stole them. Boy, it's amazing how a bird breaks, like let's say a sunflower seed. It's amazing how they crack it, extract the the meat from it, and spit yeah, well, the rest out. Yeah, and then they, but down here, the, the, the digestion is here with gravel and etc. You know, it's not it's amazing. Food in the mouth. You true. know, the, yeah, well, the bird is not only is the bird the word. Uh, the bird is also the closest relative to dinosaurs. I mean, just think about it. That's what they say. They hatch from eggs, but they're warm-blooded, like a mammal. That's what they say. I don't know if they can really tell how many dinosaurs are cold-blooded, to tell you the truth. No, they're not even sure if dinosaurs were cold-blooded. That's what I mean. According to the skeleton, the, the skeleton which is very similar to birds, they feel that dinosaurs might have been warm-blooded. Could be. When you think about it, usually... We don't know these things. Usually... 65 billion, a million years ago. You know? Usually egg layers are cold-blooded animals in general. Except for birds. Except for birds. But then again, what about the platypus? I that's a fucked up animal, man. That's that that looks like it's a genetically modified freak. Really, the platypus, platypus. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, lays an egg. Listen, right now my main concern is with bees, the bee population. So do what you can. Save the bees because we, if without the bees, we ain't going to be here much longer. I know it's a joke, but it's not a joke. So, bee conservation. It was meant to be for our food source. I mean, the bees are not, I mean, for pollination. Save the pollinators. We'll see you next week for uh, Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. Have a good, safe uh, remainder of the weekend and no next, week. next week. There's no holiday week, right? Yeah. So this Monday is not a holiday. That's right. Okay. It's just regular, regular Hazy, hot, humid, crazy, lazy, hazy day of summer. Oh, I picked up like about six, seven pounds of the freshly made smoke kill bonsa from Pias, and I I upgraded because they were they were out of the cheap two ninety nine one, so I went for the three forty nine a pound. What a difference! It, it, upgrading. Oh man, was it good? Oh, I I, I never buy supermarket hot dogs anymore. No way. I'd rather go for the for the real thing here. High quality, man. Alright. Bye bye.
This has been a mega.